Start recording. Start streaming on Twitch. Firing on all cylinders. All right, let me tag the entirety of my Discord. Oh, dude, I might want to turn up the gain a bit. It's just, I'm not going to be talking that loud today. All right. Dude, I'm so bad at typing. All right, whoops. I need to go. Is there any way to turn on streamer mode again? Yes, I am closing Discord. <laughs> I don't know how to reopen streamer mode, <laughs> which is tough. Sure, I'm sure there's a way, but actually, you know, the only way I would know is reopening my OBS, but obviously can't do that once I'm live. Okay, don't look at the notification, otherwise you will keep getting notifications. What's up, AKG? Hello. Big day today, big day today. You happy with how everything went? What's up, Yanni? Finally an original idea? This is not an original idea, I fucking stole this shit from Ludwig. As I do everything. <coughs> Which might be what you were alluding to, I don't know. I don't know, I should get some water, but I don't think I have anything cold, which is unfortunate. Alright, I'm gonna need some input from you guys. I don't watch much streamers, and by that I mean the normie service level. But you, you also don't get the discourse. Like, aren't you on Twitter or something? Do you not get the, uh... Do you not hear the rumblings, I guess? Alright, one sec. I just need to test if you guys can uh, read. Ace Trap Goon? I have no idea who that is. Alright, one second. I go on Twitter to rant and that's it only. That's actually the best way to use it. Uh, presentation. Now. Alright. So can can you on your screen can you guys read everything? Or should I cuz I have this like weird uh weird layout so my camera doesn't block anything on the presentation. But if it's too small I can just have the regular layout and just uh you know for the YouTube video edit the presentation in so you can see everything. Why is male dominated an issue? Aren't you one quarter homosexual? I didn't say it's an I didn't say it's an issue. Okay, I'm guessing it, it. I'm guessing it's fine. I'm guessing it's fine. All right. Exit. All right. Then I think we we I think we might as well get started. To be honest, this is gonna take a while, so bear with me. All right. Uh, from the start. Oh, I'm leaking my pinned uh, programs. Well, not really. Um, just a bit. All right. As you may or may not have seen, Ludwig tweeted, feels like every YouTube live streamer instantly swaps back over to Twitch or starts multi-streaming the moment their contract ends. Thinking emoji. What's up, Juice World? Now, this is really interesting because Yud... Uh, Ludwig is currently signed to YouTube to stream there exclusively with the exception of a bunch of of his events basically. So, he's if this was like if if YouTube was an NBA team and Ludwig was a player for that NBA team, he would get a suspension. I can guarantee that. Because this this is like some sort of like 
some like almost not cryptic at all i'm very 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 unhappy with the platform tweet but ludwig made a video 15 minute video explaining his position and everything uh talking mostly about the numbers between youtube and twitch what's up waluigi and how he said he doesn't know what he's gonna do yet he does say he doesn't believe in multi-streaming uh Personally, multi-streaming Haber based off my goals. I find the benefit of added overall viewership isn't worth fracturing the audience. Also find streamers have a bias towards their preferred platform, leaving one of the chats as the stepchild. Next Kaisen Hat won't be a multi-streamer with 50k average viewers on two platforms. It'll be a streamer who dominates with 80k viewers on one. Not gonna say I disagree. I feel the stepchild thing a lot. In my case, Twitch would be the stepchild. Then again, that, that stepchild doesn't really exist. Most of the time, it only like comes to visit every few weeks or so, if we're going to keep the metaphor. Be glad you're not streaming on Kick. Yeah. I mean, it's just a conscious choice, right? And then he had a follow-up tweet that was, uh, somebody replied to him, uh, what about smaller streamers? And then, yeah, oh yeah, if, I think if you're growing, you should marry yourself to one platform. And if your goal is more viewership, so you can spread your message to more people, make more money or whatever, makes a lot of sense. I multi-stream for events because I want the most eyeballs on them. I just wouldn't multi-stream me playing Fall Guys. So, yeah. Um, as you guys know, I'm also multi-streaming. I'm multi-streaming right now. Okay, and so I have my own thoughts on this whole uh, YouTube Twitch thing. As somebody who's streamed on both and is streaming on both at the same time right now. And here are my thoughts as a streamer. This is me as a streamer. All right, first of all, we're starting with discoverability. So what does discoverability mean? It's basically just, can people find your, uh, your stream? More specifically, if you're a new streamer, if you don't have any viewers. And funnily enough, uh, Harper sent something into the group chat today of her getting recommended a stream with four viewers. And this is probably how most people watching right now have found my stream. YouTube recommended them, me, a person who has like four or five viewers at a time. And you decided to click on it and you've been watching ever since. Twitch does not have discoverability. They've sort of tried to mix it up with like not always filtering or like sorting uh, the categories by viewers and following by viewers and all that sort of stuff. I don't think it works. I think there's no discoverability on Twitch at all. I think the only people that find your stream are like people that actively go looking for people with no viewers. And just like people passing through, they will simply not find your stream because it's buried. Unless you're streaming in a category that's mostly empty. All right, next one this is the big one. This is features. Now I'm only listing the features that are exclusive to the respective platforms or that are, uh, that are, you know, done vastly better by one platform than the other. Okay, YouTube has custom thumbnails. They have scheduled streams, which means you can schedule a stream in advance and people can know that there's going to be a stream happening from then to then. They also have a video description where the stream has a description, which means you can like describe your stream or put links or whatever. They also have live redirect at a thousand subs. That just means once your stream ends, you can redirect people to a video or something of that sort. I didn't know that was a feature until I looked into the list of live streaming features that Twitch has. YouTube also has a warning if no audio is detected. This, I would say, works incorrectly about 70% of the time. But the 30% of the time that, you, that it does work properly, you're like, oh, thank you for telling me. So, I don't know, it's, it's a bit of a mixed bag. My subscription, I just realized. Didn't I tell you yesterday? I don't know. You can also go live without software just by using a webcam. And you can do polls no matter how many subscribers or whatever you have. On Twitch, you need to be an affiliate at least to use polls. 
Twitch has chat rules for everyone. On YouTube, you need a thousand subs. Twitch has panels. Those are the little like images you can click below the stream to, uh, you know, click on links. But there's like an image instead. Twitch has more categories than YouTube. Twitch has rays. Twitch has collabs built in. Twitch has VIPs once you hit 50 followers. Twitch has channel points once you're an affiliate. Twitch has predictions once you're an affiliate. And then the list goes on. Twitch has shield mode. Basically, something is like an anti-raid measure if you're... As if your stream gets uh bar not what do you call it? Brigaded, basically. Twitch has better mod tools like IP bands, timeouts that are custom duration, and also you can untime people out on Twitch, which you cannot do on freaking YouTube. Once you time out someone on YouTube, there's no way to untime them out. And if you're like, I don't know, Nightbot does it, you're just stuck with it. And the only way to end the timeout is to end the stream. Also, yeah, ending the stream ends any timeout, so. But actually, that's, I don't think that's true. I think, like, the ones that are a day or so are different. Twitch also has better sub gifting in the sense that it'll only gift subs to people that are watching the stream right now. And you can gift subs to specific individuals, which I think is really, really stupid that YouTube doesn't have. Twitch also has whispers. A way to direct message, which YouTube does not have. And you, you can have a stream schedule like on your Twitch page, which YouTube does not have. All right, chat. I think this is one of the biggest differences. Uh, on YouTube chat, every name is gray except for members, which are green, I think. YouTube has bad emotes. All of the emotes on YouTube, which there aren't many of, suck with with a few exceptions you also have your profile picture next to your name on youtube which i think is kind of weird i don't really like it but maybe you do youtube also has the emoji fountain the emoji fountain is one of the worst things about youtube chat because it blocks a part of the message and it can't be turned off the only way to turn it off is by using something like truffle which lets you toggle the emoji fountain one of the worst features ever Twitch has custom colors for names. You can basically set what your color is going to be in Twitch chat. Twitch has good emotes. <coughs> Twitch has no profile picture. Twitch has offline chat, which means you can use the chat even if the streamer is offline. Twitch has badges like, I don't know, Twitch Recap 2023 or Twitch Con badge or whatever or Twitch Prime badge, Twitch Turbo badge, all that sort of stuff. And on Twitch chat, I think this is a big one for streamers. If you have somebody like come into your uh, stream with a billion different accounts, you can turn it on. So somebody needs a verified email or a verified phone number or both for their, for their account in order to chat or even to follow. So you could even like block follow botting effectively by turning that feature on. But you might hinder your growth that way because, like, somebody might want to follow and not have, like, their phone verified or something like that. Okay, audience. Audience. I think this is a really interesting part. Uh, the first two points are just, like, unique character archetypes that I don't really think exist on the other platforms. YouTube has children on their parents' account with their full legal name as their name. That's a character archetype that doesn't really exist on Twitch. And Twitch has artists looking for work who are going to self-promote. I haven't really found that on YouTube. In my experience, uh, the YouTube audience is more global, where the Twitch audience is more America-centric. Uh, here's, my, here's my YouTube audience from the analytics. I know it only has United States... United Kingdom and then Germany with 1.3%. But I promise you from talking to people, that is not the case. And then on uh, Twitch, you have like 37% uh, United States, 25% United Kingdom, and then a bunch of other countries. But in my experience talking to people, it's usually mostly American people. So yeah, I don't know if the analytics can be like trusted 100% there. I don't know. Just gotta check the bitrate, okay. 
Okay, audience. Uh, what else? Gender split, more even. Um, male leaning. There's still. I guess it depends on streamer on the streamer. But like for me, a male streamer. Uh, I have more male than female mirrors, but it's at least somewhat close. Whereas Twitch, I think, is heavily male dominated. Here is my breakdown for live streams in the pe past 28 days. It says 71% male, 28% female, and then user specified. I think the best I ever got to, in terms of like what was most even was like a 60-40 split. Then again, this isn't 100% accurate, but from talking to people, I do have a decent amount of female regulars uh, in, in comparison to male regulars. Whereas on Twitch, I've only talked to like, I'd say one or two people who like said they were female. And most are... And uh, but Twitch does not have freaking that sort of audience breakdown. They don't uh, give you any information on that. They might not even research that at all. But I think they probably would. All right, then the age. Uh, Twitch also does not research that. YouTube does. From my experience, I would put the average age of my YouTube audience from eight to seventeen. And the average audience from Twitch from like from 18 to 25. So Twitch, I would say, is significantly older. Of course, I have YouTube viewers that are older than 17. But I would say it's mostly 8 to 17 year olds. And here's the breakdown. Uh, this is for life the past 28 days. It does say it's mostly 18 to 24 year olds. But you have to consider... That maybe people aren't always truthful when they submit the age of their YouTube account. That's just my experience from talking to people. Okay, lastly, I want to—I messed up the presentation a little bit. I want to get back to this last point: is connecting with viewers. Uh, I've made—I've made—I've really gotten to know some really cool and interesting people on YouTube. Uh. People that I would consider good friends now and people that I would probably in invite to my wedding if I ever get married, I guess. On Twitch, I could really only say that there's like one person I ever talk to outside of stream. Or maybe two. But generally, I feel like you can connect with the people on YouTube a lot better. I don't really know why that is. And it's not really close as to how much I've streamed on YouTube compared to how much I've streamed on Twitch. But yeah, that's just basically my experience. Okay, analytics. These are just, this is a bit nerdy. These are the different analytics that each platform gives you as a creator, as a streamer, starting with YouTube. And this is some info from my last stream. 53 viewers, 12.4 watch hours. You can see the top traffic sources and all that stuff. <coughs> oh, sorry, I'm going to have to drink something or I'm going to die. And then we have a stream from a few days ago. That stream had got eight viewers. Wow, that stream must have really flopped, huh? But, but wait, here it is again on my YouTube studio with 115 views. So what happened? Well, once a YouTube stream has been up for a bit, it just gets converted into a video and then it starts tracking again, which means you lose the information of how much uh, clicks and how much watch hours the stream had at, like when it was a stream all you have is the cumulative uh, the cumulative views and then whatever watch hours you get from the from the stream as a video which i think is really really sucks which is why i started putting my watch hours in an excel sheet all right then there's the other stats these are chat messages and reactions you can see how many chat messages you had during a stream and when it's like a little graph don't really know what constitutes a reaction. Then we have uh, concurrent viewers. You got your peak and you got your average. This is all the stream from yesterday, by the way. 
Then this is the reach tab. This is like the last interesting one. Engagement, audience, and revenue are not, are not that interesting. You got impressions and then how many clicks you get from the impressions. You got your uh, traffic sources, browse feature, channel page, etc., etc. Then you have external sites and you have content suggesting this live stream, which you, where you can see what sort of videos recommend. Like if somebody watches uh, some video and then it recommends your live stream and then they click on it, like basically what video got them to your stream, which helps you learn a bunch about your audience. Okay, then this is the this is the analytics tab, and the light this is the live streaming section more accurately. You see like your views, impressions, click through rate, average view duration, uh, how viewers find your stream, top live streams, uh, by views, and then Twitch. All right, Twitch gives you something that's called a stream summary every day, which I think is uh, really cool. Those get saved forever, so you can go back for every live stream and see your uh, Twitch summary, your stream summary. They also get sent to you by email. So I opened my device and I got met with the weather notification colliding with the news notification. How does that work? You see your stream duration, average viewers, max viewers, unique viewers, unique chatters, live views, followers, and clips. I wish they showed you your watch hours, but they don't. <coughs> and this is that this is a this is a last 30 days analytics tab where you get your minutes watch unique viewers average viewers follows and chatters and then uh this is also the same thing and then there's like no this is the uh engagement tab i think where you can see uh where your viewers come from uh how this this i think is really cool which tags made your uh, your clicks came from, your viewers came from. I wish YouTube had this, but tags aren't really that much of a thing on YouTube. Uh, you can see the games here, the searches, all that other stuff. Uh, how engaged viewers are, what they're watching on, and your location. All right, next thing, VODs. All right, VODs are also different on both platforms. On YouTube, for example, VODs are not available right away, at least to download, sometimes even to watch. Usually, in my experience, it takes about 24 hours for you to be able to download your VOD. Why does that matter? Maybe you want to turn it into a YouTube video, you want to edit it, uh, you, you're going to want to download it. YouTube, uh, Twitch has the VOD basically available immediately. Uh... On YouTube, the download is capped at 720p, which I think is really tragic. For VODs, you can download at 1080p. Also, in my experience, the YouTube download is faster. Also, the YouTube VODs have the original stream title or whatever stream title you have when the stream ends, which is really good for finding VODs. On Twitch, they're just a string of numbers, like basically the time and date. And on Twitch, the bots get automatically deleted. Here's more on that. For regular people, you have seven days of VOD storage, which means after seven days, the VODs get deleted. Uh, you can highlight VODs so they don't get deleted, but you have to do that manually. Affiliates have 14 days storage. Partners, Turbo and Prime users have 60 days storage. And yeah. Okay, and then I'm not just a streamer, I'm also a viewer. This is me as a viewer. Alright, YouTube versus Twitch. As in terms of streaming. YouTube has a separate tab for streaming, not a website. YouTube used to have a separate uh live streaming site, which was called YouTube Gaming. Twitch as a site is just purely for live streams. There's nothing else on the site. There's clips and VODs, but that's very minute, I would say. And that's also where the big difference lies. I don't go to YouTube to watch live streams. The only live stream I ever watch on YouTube 
is Ludwig or maybe Harper if she's ever live, which is basically never. But I don't go to uh, to YouTube to watch live streams. It'll only happen that I'm on YouTube and I get a live stream recommended and then I'll watch it. If I'm looking for a live stream, 99% of the time, I'm going to go to Twitch because Twitch is the live streaming side. All right. YouTube app basically stays the same more or less all the time. The Twitch app gets a major rework every three months. The current one is absolutely abysmal. They turned it into TikTok for whatever reason. Probably because they're desperate. That's what I would have to guess. Uh, YouTube has like an okay TV experience. The Twitch TV experience really, really sucks. I think the layout is bad. Especially uh, if you want to find a stream. It's awful. Or you want to explore a category. I, uh, YouTube has a uh, great player in the sense that you can, you can go back in the stream and watch something that happened 10 seconds ago and then just like go, uh, go to like 2x speed until you're back live or you can skip ahead, you can skip back and forth in the VOD all while the stream is live. Twitch does not have that. <coughs> Twitch just has a pretty standard live streaming player where there's nothing really wrong with it, but it kind of sucks compared to the YouTube one. I would say on YouTube, I chat a lot less. Uh, and if I chat, I usually am using Truffle, which makes the chat a lot better. Uh, on Twitch, I would say I chat more, but I also do not chat much. I would say in both cases, I usually have the chat closed. Uh, either because I'm watching something like a esports event where i don't want to see the chat because it's brain dead or i'm watching a streamer and in most cases the streamer has the chat on the screen anyway you can also speed up the stream on youtube yeah i mentioned that but like only if you're not live because you can't speed up time also watching vods on youtube is great because youtube is a video site on Twitch, the VOD system is absolutely horrible. And I used to watch a lot of Twitch VODs when I was uh, still watching Ludwig VODs and Stan's VODs, etc. But it is miserable. It is so bad. Okay, and now you might ask yourself, why are the things the way they are? Why are YouTube and Twitch so different? Well, we should start with Twitch, because Twitch, as Wikipedia says, is a live streaming service that focuses on video game live streaming. YouTube is an American online video sharing platform owned by Google, accessible worldwide. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say live streams are just a small part of the YouTube business. Live streams are Twitch's only business. So obviously... Twitch is going to put in more work into making live streams good and spends basically all of their R&D and everything and their entire team on making live streams good. For YouTube, I can't really find a breakdown of how much YouTube content is consumed, like how many watch hours uh, are spent on stream uh, streaming compared to shorts and regular videos. But I have to imagine that live streaming is probably the smallest aspect of Twitch compared to videos and shorts. Which is probably why they're not investing so much. Also, in terms of live streaming, they, they don't really stand to gain that much, I would say, as compared to like the shorts market, where, there's, where the market is a lot bigger and there's a lot more to gain. Alright, some other things. Twitch is losing money. I think the reason why Twitch is innovating a lot and why Twitch also changes the way their app works fundamentally like every three months or so is because they're losing money. And they need to find a way to become profitable. So they're, they're kind of under pressure to make the product better and make it the best it can be. Yes or no? Uh, yes. All right. Now, YouTube, we don't know. YouTube, when you look up, is YouTube profitable? And the first answer you get is from Quora. That means it's a secret. It, people don't know, which means it's a mystery. If I had to, yes, I would say it's probably profitable, but we don't know.
but YouTube doesn't seem to be under the same sort of pressure as Twitch when it comes to making the best live streaming problem uh, product possible. Not even using links? Why would I use links? What are you talking about? This is just... I'm not gonna click on it. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna show Quora as a source. Because it's freaking Quora. <laughs> All right, then finally, that brings me to me. The, I took LeBron James's the decision because I'm a I'm a streamer. So what do I? So what? What about me? Well, I I started out on Twitch, and I really did not have any success on Twitch at all. And then I switched to YouTube, and I actually started getting viewers, meeting people, talking to people carving out a niche, having a community. And then eventually I started multi-streaming again, but usually Twitch got the short end of the stick if my internet wasn't good enough or something. I would kill the Twitch stream and keep the YouTube stream running. And I think it's mostly because of the people on YouTube because I found a community here. And if I had to pick one of the two, even though I think in terms of features, YouTube is much worse, and in terms of the live streaming experience, minus the, the audience, I think Twitch is a lot better. I would still go with YouTube because of the people that are on YouTube. Now, if I got an... And we're really far away from this, I have to point out. If I got some sort of exclusive streaming contract, which they don't really do anymore, I think I would take either. If Twitch was like, hey, want to get money to stream on our, on our platform only... Then I would say sorry to all the people in my chat that don't have a Twitch. I'll be on Twitch. But I gotta say, because of the people, I do prefer YouTube a lot. I just wish YouTube had a lot of the features that Twitch has. And yeah, those are basically my thoughts on the matter. Very interesting subject.